Thank you for joining us. Um, I am Melissa Ann, and I am the head of school here at Villa Montessori in Leesburg. And tonight we have our three primary teachers who are going to be going over our Montessori language area with our families. And they're going to go over the process of writing and reading um, through the Montessori, using the Montessori approach and ways that you can also implement this at home with your with your family. So without further ado, I have Miss Faria who is here with me. She's one of our primary teachers. I also have Miss Stacy and I also have Miss Maria. So these three ladies are going to walk us through the journey of uh, how the children are learning Montessori language in the classroom. Okay. Good evening. Um, so I'm going to talk about the groundwork uh, that we do in a Montessori environment with a child, getting them ready, the indirect and direct preparation to get them ready for reading and writing. So in the Montessori classroom, language is in every area of their classroom, in science, geography, math, lang language, practical life and sensorial. So uh, when they transition from the toddler, uh, toddler classroom into the primary classroom, we start off with um, matching. So I'm going to talk about pre-reading. So I'm going to talk about how the senses are trained to see the similarities and differences. So in all the areas, uh, Montessori stresses a lot on matching. So it matching could start with a young child from matching object to object, then it could move up to object to picture and then picture to picture matching. So matching, then classification and sorting, seeing gradation, seeing the similarities and differences in every experience that they're having with their hands. So that's huge and that's a big thing because when a toddler uh, is in from infancy and toddler in that phase, every experience of life that they're having around in their environment, it's with their mouth or with their hands. When they are in the primary stage, then we are giving them the language to every experience that they're having. So if they're feeling something, we give them the language that this is rough or this is smooth. If they are carrying something, we will give them the language. Is it heavy or is it light? So classifying everything and giving language to every experience that they're having is uh, how the groundwork for language starts for reading and writing. Um, so pre-reading, uh, we're refining the senses, the eyes see the similarities and differences. We're training the ear uh, by singing songs, introducing rhyming words, getting them to hear what, what, what words start with the same sound, what words rhyme, what words, um, you know, with the songs and with reading aloud to them. Um, I spy games, I spy something beginning with k -k cats, you know, so that kind of gets their ear ready to hear the sounds, the similarities and differences too. So we're training the ears, we're training the eyes. Um, so that's kind of the groundwork for pre for reading. That's pre-reading. So at home, if you're asking what can we do, uh, a child, you know, you can get two sets of flashcards and let them match them. You can get objects and you can let them match them. Um, anything that your child is doing in a Montessori environment is they're following the progression of left to right, top to bottom. So anything they start working with, they arrange their hand is naturally moving left to right and their progression of work is going from top to bottom. So left to right because we're getting them ready to read and write English. Um, so that's something to keep your eyes on at home. Uh, you know, if they're defining their workspace, start them from left to right, and it really translates. It re it's, it's really a big help when they're writing and when they are reading that that progression of left to right. Um, I'm going to come to pre um, writing. So getting the hands ready to hold a pencil. So from the toddler stage to primary, from that whole hand grasp 
to get the fingers to hold ready to hold the pencil. There's a lot of work that's in the Montessori environment. Every manipulative, every material that your child is doing is is indirectly and directly helping them to bring these fingers together, isolating these fingers to hold the pencil. So instead of a whole hand grasp, they are trying to get these fingers so that holding a pencil will be easier for them. Um, so a lot of materials in sensorial and all have knobs. So when they're holding something, they're not going like this. They're holding like this. So pincer grip is is all the groundwork is getting laid like that. Um, for pre-writing, uh, of course, crafts, very important, scissor cutting, all these things you can do it at home. A lot of gluing, a lot of scissor cutting, a lot of things that are small so that they are naturally picking them up with these fingers. Um, at home, with craft, along with craft, what children love is the sand tray. So in the Montessori environment, anything that they do, whether they're working with sensorial shapes or numbers, they are encouraged to trace and they're encouraged to trace everything. For example, if they have this shape in their hand, their first introduction would be to get these two fingers and trace the shape like this. So that's their concrete, that's their sensorial experience. So they do that. And what's that doing is helping them bring these fingers. Next, this is something they love. We wanted to show you the materials. This is the sand tray. So when we introduce the letter sounds to them, this is where they can write the letters in the sand. And that's muscle memory. And that's other than the fact that they love uh, writing in the sand, it really helps them um, remember the image of the letter sound. I'm just going to jump onto this material, which is metal inset. Metal inset is now we're getting a little bit abstract. So here's where the paper and the pencil is coming in. Uh, from the sand and the tracing, we go to chalk. From the chalk, when we're introducing the pencil, this is one of the first experiences they're having. They trace the shape, the outline of the shape. We give them the language that this is a triangle. Want to be more precise, it's an equilateral triangle. Then they remove this on the paper from the paper, and then they make edge to edge hand movements to fill in the triangle. What it's doing is the pincer grip and then the wrist movement is going to help them with their print or cursive, whatever the child decides to write. Um, I'm going to quickly move on because Miss Stacy is going to take it from here, but I'm going to tell you how we introduce the letter sounds. So after all the groundwork is has been done, we introduce the child if the focus and the concentration is all ready. We give them the sandpaper letters, lowercase only and only the sounds with a three period lesson. So basically not more than three letter sounds are introduced at a time. Two, maybe at the most three. And we introduce it to them with a three period lesson, which is very, very important in Montessori. And this is how the three periods go. We say this is N. And then we let the child trace, which is nothing new for the child because they've been tracing everything in their monastery environment. This is made out of sandpaper so they can feel it. Again, the mess muscle memory. Then we say this is V. And if there's another letter sound, we tell them what that is. That's period one, introduction of the sound. The second period is going to be where we put all three or all two letter sounds out and we say, show me. N show me work so it's a little game it's all fun there's it's no pressure so the child will point to n and point to v and then the third period is going to be tell me what sound this is so they really have to go in and kind of you know uh, trace their steps back and tell us what this is if the child forgets then we revisit the next day or later on, we revisit, we redo, and if they remember both or all three of them, we introduce new ones. So this is the introduction to um, the more formal introduction to the letter sounds. I'm going to hand it over to Miss Stacy, and she's going to carry on. That. So another thing that we do with our sandpaper letters. After they have learned all of the sounds, we want them to start picking up that initial sound of words and objects. So we usually 
have an object box and we would give them, I don't know if we have an in here. They might get, pick up a fox and they would say fox and they would figure out where the f sound is and they would set the fox with the f sound and they would go through and do that till they can isolate that initial sound. After they have learned that, we're going to start letting them build words and put the sounds together. Um, Dr. Montessori believed very much in going from abstract to concrete and or I'm sorry, concrete yeah. to abstract. That didn't, I knew that didn't sound right to me. Um, and if you think about it, letter sounds are extremely abstract. They only say it because we said they say it, but we have these letters. I don't know if you can see any of them. And she has taken what is abstract and given it concrete. So with both of these works, the sandpaper letter and the movable alphabet, they say ah, they hear ah, and they feel ah on both of the, the things. This box allows them to start building words without having to think about now, how do I make that C? How do I make an or an A? Ah? How do I make a T? So we would make, go back to our objects, and I'm just going to use the fox again since it's sitting here. We would learn ox, and so then they might look in the box, and they would find the f, and then the a, ah, and the x, and they made the word fox without having to put it, do that extra step of thinking, how do I make that letter? After they're able to make these, we might move to a little more abstract by using pictures where they would build the word with the pictures. And then finally, we have words that go with it. And we would match the word to the pictures. We also, so we work on that for a very long time, actually, just the individual three letter words, getting them comfortable and confident in reading and building, decoding and encoding words all at the same time. And then once they get that, we introduce sight words and we start putting together sentences. So we have work also similar to this. Um, where one of them is there's a picture of something and you have to read the sentence and match that sentence to the picture and that gives us some comprehension and then there are is others that the sentences tell them to do something so they might it might say the ant is in the bucket and they have to take a little ant and put it inside the bucket we move on after they know the these just phonetic letters into more blends like st F L C R those type of things and they learn to read bigger words that have the blends and it helps them flow. We also do introduce things like silent E or as it's called in Montessori the magic E because it makes the vowel say its name. Um, and we will introduce S H C H T H as well as going into the vowel phonograms of O, 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 or A, and those type of things. And we do it very similar for each stage where we will give them an object if we're lucky enough to have them, and they will build with the movable alphabet using that um, sound, the O, A sound. And then we might have the pictures and they build that with the movable alphabet. And then we would go to just plain reading it and matching the two. All this time, we're getting that writing in for a lot of us. If the child is interested in it, if the child is to the point, we'll give them paper so they can write down the words they just created. And I think that's pretty much. I'm going to hand it over to Miss Maria now. She's got the. Thank you, Miss Stacy. Hi. Well, that almost all is said. Now we go to a new stage where the child is writing sentences. Um, we study the words 
that are in the sentence. For instance, I want to show this picture. It's a girl with the always the movable alphabet is present. Remember, from concrete to abstract. We are inviting a child to write singular and plural words. I explain to that girl that these are the singular and plural of words that they are not going to have a special way to make the plural. And I said singular is one, plural is any other number higher than one. She's writing, when we arrive to son, it results that son could be ha having the plural the same as singular. I explained to her and said, you can choose what to do. And she wanted to use son and son. This is a regular plural, but I wanted to be like the real way to write the plural of song. And I gave her the choice. In Montessori, we are very specific. We talk with real words. And this is from the beginning, from baby and now. In the last year of primary or kindergarten year, they, con they continue with these words. We have sentences in many, many uh, lessons. All our science program have booklets with sentences, so they are reading and understanding. There are games like action words, that they have in cards, phonetic, short phonetic action words, and they are written in red because action or verbs are displaying energy and like the sun, they are red. So they read the words and a friend is doing the action word and they exchange places. We are in the study of the article and there are three articles a n or the uh, at this moment they see because they never realize that we don't say a apple i say when we have two very soft sounds we have to put an n in the article and we say an apple now they are more aware. We have three days working with that, and you can see how aware they get. Um, after we have the article, I explain that is when we talk about something specific. A or N is any of that. We have a farm with little animals. And there they learn about the noun. Noun are words to name anything, objects, people, cities. Every day they ask me something, humans. I say, well, humans are people. Uh, but you, you can see the interest because they come with different categories asking if they are nouns. Mm -hmm. I have cards to label all the environment. And I invite after labeling is they want to draw and write the name. So writing by this moment is included in many exercises. The child has, remember it's a progression. Now they are with ability to concentrate. If the concentration is not present, we have to build it with exercises that this is why we have practical life. Never subestimate that they are doing spooning or pouring water because the concentration is there. Um, in the farm, we have nouns for the animals, but we can tell how the animal is. And then comes the adjective. Is describing how the noun is. So they put, I have my cards in blue, 
and they put an adjective to the animals. Soft, rabbit. Strong, horse. Spotted, cow. They can switch, they can do, I invite to draw the animal and to do the sentence. In this way, it's not forcing to copy and they get ready to do more handwriting. Today, I have a girl. We introduce phonetic books at the beginning. And we suggest at home to get phonetic series, but not the same that we have in the school, so they don't memorize the words. So they have new challenges. This girl, I didn't ask her to do anything. She read her, her, her phonetic book and she made her sentences and her drawing. And she came and she said, look at my work. And she was very proud of herself. She is not ready to go to first grade, but she's joining our kindergarten time because she's mature. So the most important part is that language is around. And you give a lot of experiences, you read book. Now talk about the punctuation is when exclamation point is when you want to exaggerate something. And today they were reading a book and they love to say at the end of the sentence when they saw that they wanted to be very exaggerated. And you can read the stories with open end. So they have to think and guess the end they would like to give to that story. Um, I think I have here all. Here is uh, how they analyze a sentence. We talk about sentences beginning with a capital letter and ending with a period. And today they started asking about conjunctions. And I said, we didn't arrive to that, but we will. <laughs> so is the child is in an environment that is so rich that opens their mind, their eyes, their senses, and they are going to want more. We don't have to press. If a child feels pressure, he, that child wants to do the best because there is something expecting from the parents of him, uh, from himself. And many children are not feeling ready to that. So be patient. Everything is getting ready. And you can contact the teacher. With Montessori, I think all the aspects are touched. And remember, a child is unique. I think uh, you want to add something uh, or questions now. If any of you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm going to see if I can allow mics for everybody. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, let's see. You're right. Sorry about that. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I can unmute everybody. Hello, Mike. Here we go. If you, I think I'm having issues. I apologize. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. There is a chat box. It looks like I'm having issues with unmuting everybody. I'm I'm sorry. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, we can definitely answer any questions you may have. And I really appreciate everyone coming this evening. 
Um, this is a good time to answer any questions. Disable. I was going to see. Here we have a question from Kristen. Hi, Kristen. It said, can you recommend specific phonetic books to have at home? Oh. Can I share one? Yeah, uh, <laughs> Bob, Bob so of course there are the Bob books. Good question, Kristen. Um, so one of the things that I always recommend, I know that our teachers here do too, uh, do as well. Um, the Bob books are a really great starter kit or starter book. There are different sets that you can start with and those you can purchase right at like um, Barnes and Nobles has them. I'm sure you can purchase them through Amazon. Um, Costco has them. Um, they're they're they are found easily found everywhere. Um, but I was also going to mention to you, we recently did a Usborne um, book fair here at our school um, in the winter time, and found that they had really great books too that were phonetic. So I do think that Usborne. Um, if you know anyone who does sell Usborne, that would be a really great place to start as well. Um, we we did have um, parents purchase uh, books for our classrooms from Usborne um, that are great for the class as well. So uh, highly recommend to take a look at Usborne, um, especially for the beginning readers as well as the advanced readers. You're welcome. I'm, I'm sorry that our mic's not working. I do apologize. Um, see if we have anybody else with any questions. Um, we're happy to answer them for you. Sure. Miss Stacy has something to share as we are, oops, as we are reading the chat box here. I just wanted to mention when you do things at home, please make sure it's fun. It's not just sitting and drilling them. Um, we were just talking about the books. One that came from Usborne that my daughter loved was On the Farm, I believe is the name of it. It's Mrs. Poppy. It's Poppy and Mrs. Boots. And it was great because there was a short phonetic sentence at the top and she would read that. And then I would read the more complicated sen sentence at the bottom until she got used to reading more. And then she took over, of course, reading all of it. There are games aplenty out there and I'm not talking on the computer even. Board games are great, it teaches them to take turns. It teaches them, it uses that, a lot of them use the pencil grip we talked about. Uh, you can do it in your everyday life. What does this start, start with as you're at the grocery store and you're picking up apples? Oh, what does apple start with? Keep it fun, keep it casual so that they don't lose interest in learning. That's a really good point. Keep it fun and engaging for sure. Any other questions from anyone? Feel free to ask in the chat. Uh, looks like someone else is writing something. And I was able to unmute everybody. Um, if you did want to share anything. When is the appropriate age to introduce them to reading? You should be reading to them. I mean, ideally from birth, you read to them. Believe it or not, that makes a huge difference in a child's ability to love books and learn to read and things of that sort. Because we not only want them to learn to read, but they need to know how to make it flow, how to have the inflections in your voice, and, and that reading is just fun. So from that pinpoint, I would say from birth, um, as far as when should they know really be working on letter sounds, I'm well, going to defer to someone else because that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think is uh, as the child develops, and you are giving the all 
the tools to develop and to have, again, as I mentioned, a very rich environment. This is uh, something that is coming all of a sudden. It's an explosion. Naturally. It's mm -hmm. natural. It's like the way they walk and they talk. They are understanding words are made out of sounds. While a child doesn't have the ability to understand that words are made out of sounds and we are. He needs to understand the initial and the ending sound and put the middle sound to make a word and. To later fluently say those sounds, but it's something that you don't teach. Today we are going to do cat. This is cat. This is cat. No, he was introduced to letter sounds, to ending sounds, to middle sounds, to pick a sound and put together. And one day they are going to blend the sounds that they pick to make uh, a word. And they are going to start reading. And from there, it's going to be so easy. But remember, it's like Mrs. Stacy said, it's from birth. We cannot say today is three and three months. We had to do that. No, we lost three years and three months of a stimulation to to go to the point you want to go. But don't force the the product. They have to enjoy all the way to read. They have to discover reading and to have a joy of reading. This is the most important part. Thank you. We do have another question. Yep. So the next question is for a multi-language child, when, when start reading, should we introduce one language as the main one or should we introduce both as, as it both doesn't matter? Thank you. Bilingual, I don't, in my experience, I don't think, I've been asked this question a lot if it confuses a child. Um, my own children, bilingual, I have not seen uh, it as a disadvantage or, you know, introduce both languages, um, introduce both languages simultaneously. Of course, they're doing English at school. Uh, most part of their day is their exposure to English. Um, but the thing is, it I have never seen uh, children confused or thrown off by it. It's definitely a strength. It definitely gets the brain uh, equipped to see uh, to uh, grasp things faster. Uh, it's encouraged, highly encouraged. But um, I would say, whatever language you're speaking at home or or an English, uh, however you introduce it. Introduce it the Montessori way, which is little bit at a time, isolating it, whatever you're putting in front of them, uh, not a lot all at the same time, that might throw them off. So, for example, if you're doing letter sounds or numbers in your mother tongue, um, follow the three period lesson, the way you introduce it, uh, two or three at a, at a time and kind of isolate that, let them master that and then move on to the next. Um, that's how English is approached in, in their Montessori environment. So isolating few things at a time, introducing it with the three period lesson. Um, no matter, I had one parent ask me a question where they were doing French at home and English was at school, of course, and they said that child was confused for and it was an advanced reader. But she was confused. Um, she would kind of, you know, uh, mix up uh, French and English. So we suggested, OK, whatever the confusions are, take few words at a time and classify them. So then they did that and it really worked for that child in that particular case. So they classified, they did, OK, in French, hot is this. In English, you know, the, it's hot. So they took two or three uh, challenges that the child was having and they kind of classified them hand in hand in both languages, and the child was able to uh, have a cl more clear perspective of both the languages. So I think it's 
every child is unique, every, you know, situation, every language, but in our, my experience, I've seen that it's it does not matter. It's definitely a strength for the child. But uh, just if you want to be consistent with how they're being taught English at school, uh, Montessori is the best way to implement with your mother tongue at home too. Uh, and it hopefully it should not be a challenge. Thank you, Ms. Farr. Does anybody have any other questions at this time? If not, and you think of any, feel free to, of course, speak with your teachers, your child's teacher, or speak with your administrators um, at the schools that you attend. Um, we're happy to, of course, answer any additional questions. Um, and I know that uh, it's it's a really great journey, of course, using the Montessori approach. And um, of course, it's more more about the process um, than, of course, the product with the Montessori approach. And learning to read and write, of course, is a long journey. So uh, feel free, of course, to reach out to any one of your teachers or any one of us. We're happy to answer any other questions. Uh, but I'd like to thank all the families for joining us this evening. And of course, to our wonderful teachers here, Ms. Faria, Ms. Stacy, and Ms. Maria. So thank you for joining. And we look forward to our next Parent Education Night. I hope you all have a good evening.